So I wanted to create a large fence that more or less lived on my table saw all the time. And in order for that to happen, I needed to create a lot of versatility in it. I wanted it to be able to help me perform as many different table saw functions as possible so I didn't have to remove it. At the core of my table saw fence is the sub fence. It consists of two identical vertical parts screwed into a horizontal part made of two strips of three quarter inch Baltic birch. There's a front and back screwed into place and the front has a notch cut out to allow for the fence lever. The two sides of the sub fence are screwed to the horizontal piece to create a piston fit on the saw's rip fence. It needs to fit perfectly so that there is no movement or racking that will throw it out of square when you're cutting on the saw. So take your time cutting and assembling the sub base because it's the foundation of the rest of the fence. I also added four T-nuts which I'm marking here for you to see along both sides of the fence to allow me to bolt on a tall auxiliary fence to the sub base. You can see here how I countersunk those T-nuts into the sub fence. I did this operation before I assembled it and those T-nuts allow me to bolt on this nearly foot tall auxiliary fence. It's made of two pieces of three quarter inch Baltic birch laminated together and skinned on both sides with sheets of white formica. One side of the fence has a T-track installed in it, the other has a notch cut out at the bottom, and the top has a special miter track which I'll talk about more later. You can see here how once you bolt it on it becomes a rock solid fence. Now I'm putting all my weight on it and notice that the sub fence never moves or rocks. So one of my favorite design elements of this fence is that it's reversible. The way that I laid out the hole patterns to fit into the sub base, I can take this off and flip it around and attach it to use the notch side of the fence. Or if I want to, I can take the whole fence, put it on the other side of the blade and attach this to the other side of the sub base. And if that all was confusing to explain, let me just show you what I mean. Okay, so you may be asking yourself about the Formica. Is that really something that I need to add to my fence or is that just a luxury? Well, yeah, it's a luxury, but let me explain to you why I did it. You see, this Formica is super tough and durable. It can take a real beating. I built this thing about five years ago and it still looks brand new. I mean, I've done so many operations on this thing and it just looks great. Another thing about it is it's really slick nice and smooth so when you're moving your cuts across the table saw you're not going to get any drag at all on this fence. Another nice benefit this because of this nice white background uh, if I need to make pencil marks for reference lines on the fence those show up highly visible so as I'm making cuts and I need reference lines I can see those and those are going to clean right off this surface super easily so I can start over again on my next operation. So luxury yes uh, but really, really nice to have. Absolutely. Okay, now let's talk about all the things you might want to attach to this fence. And the first thing would be feather boards. Feather boards are a great way to add downward pressure to your workpiece as you push it through the saw blade, helping to prevent nasty kickbacks. If you only have one feather board, that's fine, but it's good if you can add one just before and after the blade to control the workpiece throughout the cut. I'll leave a link in the description to the feather boards that I'm using here. Another jig that can be attached is the very useful L-Fence. The L-Fence makes quick work of rabbits, straighter tapered cuts, miters, bevels, and making precise cuts on awkwardly sized parts. My L-Fence is just two boards fastened along their edge at a right angle. One side is attached to the fence, and the other side extends horizontally for a workpiece or template to ride against. And because this fence floats over the blade, it doesn't get damaged like a sacrificial fence would. For example, let's say I wanted to make a taper cut along one side of this MDF. I first make marks where the beginning and end points of the taper should be. Next, I need to find some type of straight edge to use as a guide for the fence. Now, I'm just gonna use this scrap of hard maple that I already know is straight 
but you can use anything with a straight edge. I fasten the guide to my workpiece using double-sided tape, lining it up at the beginning and end points of my taper. You want to make sure that the L-fence is hovering just above the blade so that it's flush with the outside edge of the blade and that the blade height is just enough to cut through your workpiece. Now I just run the workpiece through the saw making sure that my guide is contacting my L-fence at all times. Then I can just pop off the guide and there's my taper. This was an easy cut to make. I didn't need a tapering sled for it and I also didn't have to put my hands near the blade. Okay, for my next trick, I need to flip the fence around to use the notch side. Think of this like a miniature L fence, but with a really tall vertical support. By setting the blade flush with the fence, anything riding against the fence is going to be safe, and anything under the notch will be cut by the blade. Okay, let's say that this scrap of plywood is a shelf that I glued a hardwood edge onto, and I want to cut that edge flush. I just firmly hold the workpiece against the fence and the blade takes off the excess. Now I have my edge all flush with the shelf. Okay, so what makes this whole thing work is this slider that I built to ride in this aluminum miter rail on top. I made it out of two pieces of three quarter inch Peruvian walnut. Really, you just need any type of really dense hardwood to use on this, something that'll stand up to a beating. And I put T-nuts in both sides of it and then sandwiched it together so I have the ability to bolt on accessories on either side of this. And it slides back and forth with a nice smooth ride. There's not a lot of slop in this. And it allows me to basically attach any jig or anything that I make to this that needs to slide back and forth across the saw. So great addition to the fence and gives me a lot more options for adding jigs and fixtures to this fence in the future. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description for getting this miter rail system because it's the best one I found for this job. So probably the most used jig that I attach to the slider is one that allows me to cut tenons. I've done this many times in other videos making door parts for cabinets. This jig is pretty simple. There are two holes at the top to bolt the jig to the slider and two holes along the back to bolt on a vertical fence that is 90 degrees to the table. Now if you want to learn more about the process of cutting tenons, I've already made a video describing that and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. Here you can see with the cuts I made on this scrap wood how the jig safely guides your workpiece vertically across the blade. Now you can see here how easy it is to change out the jigs on the slider. Everything is fastened with one inch quarter 20 hex bolts. The last jig I'm going to show you guys is the spline cutting jig. It's the same size as the tenoning jig, but instead of a vertical fence, it has a 90 degree V fence that cradles the workpiece across the blade. This allows you to cut slots for splines and things like mitered picture frames to add strength to the joint. Now I'm not making picture frames at the moment, but here's an example of cutting these using two pieces of wood that I glued up using a miter joint. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is the tool caddy that I built on the top of the fence. Now I wanted to make sure that all the tools that I normally use at my saw are available to me in one place. The one feature that I love about this caddy is the addition of these magnetic strips so that any steel tools will stay in place and not shuffle around when I move the fence. Now to make these, I just countersunk some holes in the scrap wood, inserted some rare earth magnets, and then glued a very thin veneer over them. I then glued these strips onto the side of the caddy where I wanted them. I also made custom holders for things like push sticks, my square, pencils, and a router lift crank because I also have a router table built into my table saw. Basically, just make custom secure holders for all the small stuff that you want available. I find that this creates less clutter and allows me to throw other things like stop blocks, safety gear, and my dust collector remote into the caddy. Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video and that you're inspired to make one of these fences for yourself. Uh, if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts.